afraid to join efforts in isolating criminals, creating negative narratives for the two countries. The new South African envoy to Nigeria announced this when he visited the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. I bet you would not like to miss any of these, but that wouldn't be all. The Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NIDCOM, pledges to partner with the Nigeria Union of Teachers, NUT, Lagos Chapter, to create capacity building for teachers at the national level. Great news, isn't it? Now, Nigeria at 60 is indeed a big deal, and celebration mode has been fully activated. On this edition, we bring you several good room messages from our loved ones in the diaspora. This is your favorite program, The Diaspora, and I am your host, Koinsola Adetumi. Please stay tuned. Relations between Nigeria and South Africa is cordial, smooth, and forward-looking, especially government to government. Please take a listen to this conversation between South African High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador Thami Msileku, and the Chairman CEO of NIDCOM, Honorable Abike Dabiri Arewa. We want to work with you basically in terms of the people-to-people -people engagement. We already have a program put together by a Nigerian lady in South Africa on what can be done here in terms of having that conversation among the people. There's no conversation, there's no problem, government to government. The problem is the people to people. A few Nigerians definitely have committed some crimes in South Africa, but that doesn't make every Nigerian a criminal. A few South Africans have put up some xenophobic um, attacks, but that doesn't make every, every South African xenophobic. So we, and it's very important for Nigeria and South Africa for us to have those conversations, people to people level, and then cultural exchanges. My first impression about South Africa was Ipitombi. Aya Ipitombi, yeah. You know, and that's talk. And then when you're in South Africa, they're asking about virtually every Nigerian actor, actress, singer, and they show a lot of love and, you know, support and appreciation for us as Nigerians. And so we need to celebrate the strengths in ourselves and our countries than the weaknesses. And we've told Nigerians in South Africa, if you commit a crime, you will be punished for it. But then what the commission is also doing is there are too many Nigerians in South Africa that are in the academia, medical professionals, entertainment, business community, the finance world. One of the engineers that built one of your, you know, some of your roads is a Nigerian. So we put, these are the Nigerians we also need to let the world know are in South Africa, not the few that are doing drugs or committing crime. So we'll work with you in terms of having these conversations around who we are, truly as Nigerians and as South Africans. As part of the the Nigeria South Africa uh, Binational Commission, there was an agreement uh, that we need to develop a mechanism for early warning systems in relation to what happens in South Africa. And the, 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 that agreement actually talks about two elements. It's more a security and intelligence driven on the one hand, but on the other hand, which I think is the most important, the sort of conversations and people-to-people -people relations. And uh, I thought your commission is very, very critical to have as part of that element. So that's why I thought we should have a, 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 should, should make this courtesy call to yourself. We have a, a, some work to do, all of us. First of all, the question that is actually being posed actually uh, does exactly that. It actually says, what are you doing to change the mindset of South Africans. And for me, the mindset of South Africans is actually not a xenophobic mi mindset. You may have South Africans that are xenophobic, just like you have Nigerians that are, conduct and South Africans, by the way, in South Africa, that are actually criminals. Criminals must be dealt with as criminals, including the xenophobic criminals. Uh, so all of us together have to actually work towards isolating that criminal element, be it a, a drug criminal or a xenophobic criminal. And the government of South Africa is very clear on that question. I was saying to 
to, to, to my uh, excellency here that one of the things that we are dealing with in South Africa is that we must make sure that our police service don't collaborate with the same criminals because that is what is leading to the to the uh, to, to the ordinary uh, uh, elements that are now being actually pulled into some kind of xenophobic uh, uh, criminal acts by people who have other agendas too. Uh, they may actually be using this, this sentiment that may be felt by people. And that's because the police are not acting against the criminals. And if they do act against criminals, then the people won't start worrying about marching and moving around and shouting that that uh, th there's something that must happen. So what we are doing, first of all, is to ensure that our law enforcement agencies start working and dealing with criminality, whatever source it comes from. It, 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 criminality has no uh, ethnicity, has no color, and has no creed or whatever. It's just criminality. So I, I think it's important for us, as, um, as my excellency has said, to begin to, to actually send the message that together we'll isolate criminal elements. Kudos to both governments as we hope this works out perfectly to reunite us strategically. Great news as NICOM is set to partner with the Nigerian Union of Teachers Lagos chapter for capacity building. Nigeria has a large number of academia topping in their professions abroad. So NITCOM will latch onto its diaspora to build capacity for the teachers. Enjoy the time with the teachers. If this commission will be looking towards how Nigerians out of this country could help, particularly in the area of education, to those of us who are in the system here, the government of Lagos State have done so much well for teachers of Lagos State in the public schools. Yeah. All of us, they have moved us from the days of analog to digital. As we speak now, our teachers in primary schools, the first set have finished their systems on the, what they call the Go Excel, we are teachers and the pupils will be communicating via digital. So when pandemic came, it did not come to them by surprise. So it was a right peg on the right hole. And what else? Even in the area of the head of schools, they improved the running cost of schools by 500% at a time when states are proning down. They are proning down their budget to say no education is out, is, it should be outright. If this that the government of Lagos is doing could be complemented by our Nigerians out of the system in collaboration with the union, we'll be very glad to have um, educational exchange programs, to have um, educational tours, to have an um, on-spot assessment of educational facilities that we don't have here. Our teachers are renowned teachers. They are committed. Majority are now buying, though they may not be able to buy digital um, sophisticated materials, but they are buying phones now that can make them communicate with their pupils right in their houses. During the, during, during the lockdown, education in Lagos State was not locked down. As I stand here today, I have a good testimony of training and retraining of teachers, both home and abroad. I have been to Kenya, I have been to Finland for training, courtesy of Lagos State government. Courtesy of Lagos State government. They have, like her, her mother rightly said, that they actually provided enabling environment for us. Not only the teachers, for the students alike. Like in my own school, we have three computers laboratory e-learning centers that our children, they are taught from JSS1 up to SS3 on e-training, e-learning. We have interactive boards, interactive this, interactive that. That when it gets to the time to write the jump, you see them coming up with 340, 360, 
over 400 in jam students from public schools so the, what is happening today is not just happening it has started it's been a consistent thing based on this meeting let us work on a capacity building program that can enhance the teaching profession in Nigeria. You know, when I was on television, all this CNN and everything, they were not better than those on NTA, but they had better facilities to work with. In fact, the things that you know, the average NTA person could do, they couldn't do because they had everything, but the facilities were just not there. So we have human capacity. Our greatest assets are human resources, that you just need to reach out to them. We'll get some of these um, agencies that I'm sure will be glad to support. The Commission will be working with teachers all over Nigeria to work on capacity building with Nigerians in the diaspora. Diaspora State Focal Point Officers are the first point of call in the value chain engagements with Nigerians in diaspora, hence frequent interface with the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Let's listen to the Plateau State Diaspora Focal Point Officer. In the past few years, the diaspora matter has become very, very critical not only to the Nigerian economy, but to the global economy. The contributions to inflow of income of different nations uh, by the diaspora has been very, very significant. Uh, even in some countries, it's almost like the number one income contributor uh, to their nations. And uh, in Nigeria, too, is becoming more and more important. So uh, the commission is in a uh, well-placed position right now, and uh, every state is out to key into it. And uh, so Plateau State is not left out. That's why my appointment. And uh, I'm here to uh, make myself available as representing Plateau State and uh, also to be briefed by uh, your good self to know what is the right thing to be done and when to do what and so on. mood of Nigeria at 60, please take a listen to a goodwill message from some of our diasporans. Happy Independence Day to my beloved nation of Nigeria. It's Alex Ehama um, here in Toronto, Canada, um, wishing the nation the, 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 the very best. I mean, at 60 years old, um, there are a couple of things we should um, have got right by now. And, and, and I know that the nation is working hard and, and progressing towards uh, uh, unveiling its greatness. Uh, Nigeria, as we know, is the largest uh, 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 nation in Africa, the most populous uh, black nation on the planet. We must become the change we desire to see. It is time to build a set of principles that is going to enable you I'm not. If we, if the country must rise, you must rise. People don't understand. We are the country. We are the nation of Nigeria. Right? It's time to ignite our own leadership spirit. It's time to discover our purpose. It's time to develop our character. It's time to be the leader that we are called to be. The prospect of the nation is high. The expectations are high. Even the anticipation are high. You know, we have uh, millions of youths who are looking up to us and, and we must rise up and create that opportunity. Happy birthday, Nigeria. Happy 60th birthday, Nigeria. My name is Denise Mobalaji Ajayi Williams and I'm the CEO and co-founder of SVNED, a Silicon Valley Nigeria Economic Development. Over the last 60 years, we've accomplished a lot. We continue to break and shatter records worldwide. Nigerians are known to be hard workers, dedicated, committed, and great patriots of our great nation. And we should continue to drive forward and show and display our confidence wherever we go around the world. In the next 60, I would like to see the first woman vice president, 
the first woman president, intergenerational collaboration in government and leadership, invest in green economy, invest in our digital economy, and more expansion of fiber optics creating right of way. And the way to keep and retain talent and attract talent is through intergenerational government and policies. We have to be more inclusive and bring young adults into conversation over leadership and policy writing, starting with me or even you. So take your part and do your part. Care about the climate, clear, care about the digital economy, and care about the overall global view of our country. So how we demonstrate ourselves on social media, how we demonstrate ourselves in the economic conversations matters to us all. So when we walk around as proud Nigerians, anywhere we are in the world, we can be proud to say we are from the great nation of Nigeria. Happy birthday to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, my home country, my blessed home country. We appreciate our forefathers who sacrificed so much to see the realization of what we call Nigeria today. Nigerians in diaspora are making headways. If you look at if you look at the healthcare, the best doctors, the best nurses in the United States in particular are Nigerians. The best education is professors in the universities. I want to use this opportunity to salute our president, President Mohammed Buhari, who, in his infinite wisdom, was able to sign the Diaspora Commission and make it a law. And today we have the Diaspora Commission. And this is an opportunity for us to enhance and invite the diasporans to be involved in our national development. And I must not, in this 60th independence anniversary, fail to acknowledge Mama Diaspora, Honorable Babike Dabiri Erewa, who fought tirelessly for many years to see that Nigerians in diaspora are recognized. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If we're looking forward, I'm looking for, I stay with the theme of Mr. President, togetherness. You know, peace and coherence and living together. We need to know one another. You know, I want to take a step back to when I was growing up as a child. I grew up in the police barrack, and in the police barrack, we're all children of police. It doesn't matter where you come from whether you come from the west, north, east, or south. We're all one, and we're all together. So we should always use our diversity to be our strength. So that's what I'm looking for, Nigeria, to come together as one. Yes, how do you see Nigeria in the next 60 years? Uh, Nigeria in the next 60, uh, it's going to be a beautiful country. And it's going to be very well advanced in industry and technology and also uh, food security. So all those things are coming together uh, with the wisdom of the leadership that we have now. I've been here since 2015, back and forth, back and forth, seeing the terrain and the rest. I guess my advice to them is just be prepared when you come, be ready and understand that you have to make a sacrifice what you want to do. It's not going to be the same thing you're used to living out there in, the, in Europe or America or anywhere you were. But you have to be able to tolerate, compromise, and also live within the compromise of what Nigeria is. And help, because you're coming back here, you're bringing back knowledge, and you're going to be able to help and make sure that the country grow with some of your knowledge. Thank you for all the felicitations. God bless Nigeria. Ha! Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. 
Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, hey. listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad or even end up in prison. Still in the mode of celebration, let's celebrate our very own Nigerian cultural icon, Ayo Akinfe popularly known as Ayo the First, as he was made the liveryman of the city of London with an award from the British Historical Medal Group. Thanks to icons like you, we are breaking barriers. Let's also celebrate Mr. Tobe Wigwe, a Nigerian-American rapper who made top two on the iTunes hip-hop chart and top 12 on the Billboard chart with no record label and no marketing. All day. My man, I love you, Tom. Appreciate you, man. Love you, man. We appreciate you having me. Thank you, yeah. My favorite interview right here. Try Jesus. Come on. Not me. Cause I throw hands. once again brother thank you for staying all through the program we hope it's been worth your while and in case you have anything to share with us please do not hesitate to do so as we expect feedback on our show remember you can reach us on all our social media platforms on Facebook at Nigerians in Diaspora Commission on Twitter at nitcom underscore gov on our Instagram page at nitcom underscore gov on our YouTube page at nitcom underscore gov and on our website at www.nitcom.gov.ng You can also join us on DSTV at NTN Network on Friday at 10.30 a.m. on NTN International on Tuesday at 6 a.m. and 10.05 p.m. on NTN News 24 on Friday at 2.30 p.m. and on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. You can also join us on WAP TV on Thursdays at 9 a.m. and on WTV on Wednesdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. I remain your host, Coin Salah Adetumbi. See you next time.